Feeling good, are you feeling good? Seven things that drive a narcissist crazy. Feeling good, number one. Light and love, number two. Unicorns, empaths, me, and we're done. No, okay. <sighs> Seven things that drive a narcissist crazy. Why do we want to drive a narcissist crazy? Why do you want to drive a narcissist crazy? You don't really want to, right? Because to drive a narcissist even crazier, they're already cray cray. Narcs be cray cray, okay, Kay? So you want to make them like a sociopath? No, come on you, you trickster, you don't wanna do that. Seven things that drive a narcissist crazy. Number one, videos like this. <laughs> videos like this, I know, they drive them crazy. They're like, why are we still talking about this? I'm all about the hair flip these days, why? We're still talking about it, cause narcs, you keep on narking out there. That's why we're talking about it. Gaslighters, just stop already and we'll be done. We'll pack up and, and have, have some fun. That, I didn't even mean to rhyme. What? Okay, we're going with it. So we don't really wanna drive narcissists crazy, but we're done driving ourselves crazy. And for whatever reason, this title seemed to work. So we're just gonna talk about it, okay? When? Right now, right now. You're like, Leah, when? When? You keep saying you're gonna talk about it, but you're not talking about it. Okay, number one, videos like this. Number two, people like me. Number three, this coat, my hair, my makeup, my life, my light. <sighs> Bitter much? No, I'm not actually. So they really do, they hate videos like this. They don't wanna spread education about this stuff. They don't. Because they can't keep on narking out there. They're only going to be able to hang out with our, their narcissists if people like me keep talking. So they're like, Leah, please shut the F up. Maybe if we tell her we hate her coat, she'll shut up. Maybe if we tell her her makeup's stupid, she'll shut up. Maybe if we tell her she's ugly, stupid, dumb, she'll shut up. Nope, I'm still going. I'm still going. Didn't work. Number two thing that they hate is kindness and empathy. They really do. They actually, truly, they don't like it. It kind of annoys them because see, they can't feel that. They think it's fake because they can't genuinely feel kindness and empathy. It's like really bothersome when somebody else does. And it also shines the light on the fact that they don't feel that. And yeah, it is sad. And in my last video, I talked about how that might play into not only your empathy, but also your ego because you're like, I'm gonna get them to feel because I am that filled with light and love. I have rainbows coming out of my eyes. They're gonna feel the love and be like, finally, like the Grinch, my heart just expanded 25 sizes. No, they're not. And the problem with all these old like Disney fables about like the mean guy, he's just really mean, he's a big beast, but if you keep loving him, he'll turn into a prince. That's narcissism in a nutshell. They don't turn into a prince. And if they do, it'll be for a glimpse and then they'll take it away and give it to their new supply. So you don't want that. They don't like your kindness. They don't like empathy. That really irritates them. That drives them crazy because they think it's fake. They think your kindness is fake. And if you're nice to a lot of people, they say that's extremely fake. I've had people attack me because in my acting studio, I used to be a brick and mortar. Me, I was a brick and mortar building. <laughs> I used to have a brick and mortar building and now I'm totally online since the pandemic. That drives them crazy too. For some of the narcissists that attacked me for having a building, then they attacked me for not having a building. See, it's never good enough for them. Never good enough. They're like, you are a sign in the yard, Leah. You don't have a sign in the yard anymore. You don't have a, a, a building, so you are nothing. They wanted to convince me of that. It's not true. And it would annoy them if on my Facebook, I had students saying, Leah, thank you, you helped me. They, they would be like, that's fake. I had a narcissist I was dating once. He was actually a sociopath. I know you guys are jealous about my dating history. It's very glamorous. It's very glamorous. Um, he was a sociopath and maybe even a psychopath, but my therapist thought he was a sociopath. And he was 
uh, dissociative di identity disorder and um, was like splitting in front of me and acting like a two-year-old little boy and then a big giant man and it was very very scary I felt like I was in a really bad lifetime movie it was like bad acting but it was really happening it was very very scary and alarming and he was like you're so fake you're so fake because with all your students you say that you have all this light and love but with me you have nothing you have nothing ah! and I'm like I have nothing because you are terrifying me so they'll gaslight you with your own good qualities. They're like, where's your empathy towards me right now when I'm abusing you? I'm like, oh my gosh. But you can't reason with somebody like that. Very, very scary. So it drives them crazy when you notice who they really are. When you see it, it's like, oh my gosh. Because when I was watching him, I thought, oh my gosh. Where is my empathy right now? All I want to do is protect my life, quite literally, and get him out of my house safely and call the police. I don't feel sorry for him right now. I'm in protective mode. It's very, very scary. That drives them crazy because they see it in your eyes. So then I had to do an acting job. Like, oh, everything's fine. Don't worry. Because I don't want him to to unalive me I didn't know what was going to happen it was that scary narcissists hate people talking about this because they're like you're so dramatic people that doesn't happen so they'll gaslight you but if you've been through this you know exactly what I'm talking about exactly what I'm talking about they don't it drives them crazy that we're talking about this because they want while they're off having their party for you to just be broken and in pieces wondering what happened and they can dance the night away because now they're with their new supply or whatever. Because you saw who they were. They hate that. So now they're definitely getting their um, fix with somebody new or some bodies new for sure. Number three, they hate sad events, anything. We all do, right? None of us like it. But like that's when they really shut off i can't it's indescribable it's really hard to talk about this stuff but you can feel the energy four is they despise victims because they know they victimize a lot of people so they despise victims now i too i don't like victim consciousness because i believe no matter what's happened to you and i'm so sorry if horrible things have happened to you i really am and that's not who you are. You are not a victim. You were victimized. The situation was horrible and you didn't deserve that. But you are not a victim. So they love to lump you in if you're just sharing of an experience. You're not a victim, but maybe a story where you were victimized. They hate that. They'll be like, well, why were you so stupid? Or they'll say something like, if I was there, like maybe if your car was broken into horrible event you didn't ask for that you didn't deserve that they'll make that your fault well I wouldn't have parked there well I would have done this smarter well I would have done that smarter that's also another way that they verbally abuse which I'll link um, to a video I just did on verbal abuse but that's another way that they verbally abuse you well I would have done this well I would have done that however you did it was stupid and that's why you were victimized because you're an idiot <laughs> That's why they would have done it smarter. They wouldn't have parked there. They would have gone at a different time. They would have done blah, 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 blah. Because they're all high and mighty and above everybody. Number five. Number five. Seven things that drive a narcissist crazy. Ha! Seven things <laughs> that drive a narcissist crazy. Somebody like me trying to talk about narcissism. Okay? <laughs> Number five. If you call them out on anything, and I mean anything, anything, it could be um, something that happened to you. I had a situation that happened with my insurance once, and I was talking to an old narcissistic friend, and I said, this thing happened, and it was horrible when I had cancer, and I had to pay out of pocket, and blah, 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 and she's like, didn't happen, that didn't happen. And I called her out on it. I said, why are you saying that something that actually happened to me didn't happen? 
you're gaslighting me right now. It did happen. It was my experience. I talked to 25 different people trying to get help in the healthcare profession, helping me through this problem. And you in one flippant comment are saying that didn't happen or I did it wrong. What? And she was like, well, you just must have, you must have done it wrong. And she's like, I'm sorry, I disagree. You must have just done it wrong. She hated being called on that, even though it was my experience. That's a red flag, major red flag. And what difference does it make to somebody else? But you're always in the wrong when it comes to them, always. Whether you're happy, that's fake because you're too happy. If you're down, then that's just heavy and they wanna be around somebody light. There's no winning with them. It all drives them crazy, really. If they're not controlling you to a T, it drives them crazy. But even if they are, that drives them crazy. So really everything drives them crazy. It's the only emotion they can feel. <laughs> That's it. Okay, but number six is when you don't take their bait. Seven things that drive a narcissist crazy. I love this one. This one's actually really fun because they hate it when you don't take their bait. They hate it. Like I had a comment and I, I wish I knew exactly what it was now. It's just hitting me as we're doing this. But I had a comment on one of my, um, on one of these videos that I did and ah, they were trying to call me something and it was a very passive aggressive way. I wish I'd written it down. It's just now hitting me. So I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was a passive aggressive comment. And then I responded with like loving kindness. And they're like, that was directed at you, Leah. And I'm like, I know. <laughs> You commented on my YouTube video. I know it was directed at me. And it was just hilarious because I've played that. Not that you want to play a game with them, but sometimes, hey, we can have a little entertainment and not take bait from a narcissist who wants to abuse you. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with you having a little fun enjoyment from not taking their narcissistic abusive bait, okay? You're allowed to do that. So I have countless examples of this and especially in my studio with different things like it's just funny because they'll send you like little ambiguous things and I always know what they mean. It is like so obvious when they do that. But if you don't take their bait and you kind of play dumb, aloof, that drives them crazy. They're like, that didn't work. Ah, or like I said in the verbal abuse video, if they're like, Mm, interesting that you would wear that dress. I would never wear that dress. You know, people of our age should never wear a dress like that. I would never. And you're just like, oh, that's interesting that you would never do that. Or you just repeat what they said. It drives them crazy. Because what they want you to go, oh my God. Oh, I didn't get permission to wear this dress. Oh, you're right. Is it stupid? Is it a stupid dress? Oh, I should have asked your permission. And then they're like, yep. I'm in charge of the world. Drives them crazy when you don't take their bait. Don't, don't do it. Ah, number seven. This one might seem really snarky and sarcastic, but narcissists, unfortunately, are very snarky and sarcastic. That's what makes them kind of funny sometimes too. <laughs> and that's what actually, sometimes I connect with them because I can, even though I'm very empathetic, I've also used my sense of humor and self-deprecating humor oftentimes to get out of uncomfortable situations as a default. Well, number seven of something, I never can count these things, right? I don't know. Seven ways. The seventh way, okay, that you could drive a narcissist crazy is when you just don't stop. When you keep thriving. When you keep showing up to life. And when you keep shining by getting knowledge and empowered tools from videos like this or meditation or yoga, whatever brings you to your light, doing your art, acting, whatever it is for you, dancing, they hate that. Because once they're done with you, and they're never really done. I mean, the only way that the door is really closed is when you close well, it. I am burning the bridge down to the ground with some of these videos on some of these narcissists who I know are like, I want nothing to do with her. Believe me, I'm not hoovering her again, right? Because I, I've just burned that bridge down to the ground by doing videos like this. For some, that will be like even more of a big sport game. But for some, I know they're like, I just hate her, hate her, and that's fine. 
but they hate it when you don't just shrivel up and end up like a lip ball in the kitchen. They hate that. So keep shining, not to hate them, not to get them to hate you more or to, they hate you either way, so it doesn't matter. And not to get them to drive them crazy, but to live a life of enjoyment. So really it's how to live a life of enjoyment because you deserve the highest and best. And you just being in your light and being happy and doing all the things that bring you joy, that's gonna be a huge contribution to the planet. And that drives them crazy. <laughs> but that's not why we do it, okay? We do it for us and for all the good people because there are a lot of good people. And we're making empathy, compassion, artistic, evolve evolvement. I'm making that up right now, but we're going with it. We're making that a new trend. Instead of bashing each other down, putting each other down, having narcissists win in all areas, that's so outdated. Let's not bring that into 2023 or ever, whenever you're watching this. It's so old. That's like generations old, okay? It's time for a new paradigm. Please comment how this video helps you. Drop some love get into the community. It's a free way that we can all uplift one another. And if you wanna go even deeper, get into one of my acting classes or uh, do some private coaching. I mean, I have a lot of offerings right here. Peruse other channels, see what makes you feel good. If we're a match and we're in alignment and I can help you to access your gifts and talents, then I would love to do that. If I'm not the teacher for you, that's all good. Just do whatever helps you. And if you haven't yet, please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you know when these videos are posted because you deserve support. You're here for a reason. You matter. Thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Maybe you want to watch this video. Today next. we are talking about narcissists and verbal abuse. Doesn't that sound fun? You wanna, you wanna, or you wanna watch this other one? It's up to you. Trust that you know what's best for you.